Welcome. This is Jenkins Platform Special Interest Group. It's the 23rd of April, 2024. Topics on the agenda for today include container image updates for controllers, for agents, Java 21 support plan. Let's move that one down a little bit because there's not an awful lot to talk about on it. We'll do this. Topic, other topics include Docker Hub and the HTTP 429 response, the Docker-based quick start tutorials, and work in progress on various images. Any other topics we need to discuss? Okay, then let's take the, the, the first one first. Container images updates for the Jenkins controller. So as a, as a result of this HTTP 429 errors, it was observed that we might be able to reduce the incidence of it by reducing the number of layers we were creating. We had been considering a switch from using a the container images as our basis to instead using the tar files for to install Java. We've now made that switch on the controller. Uh, thanks to Bruno Verachten for his work on it. Thanks to Erwin Emir on it. Uh, we confirmed that it is working for Java 21. It's working for Java 17, and it's doing what is expected for Java 11, which is waiting until all versions of Java 11 0 23 are available for all the platforms we need. Right now, the Alpine build of 11.0.23 is not yet available from Eclipse. And because it's not yet available, we're holding off. We're still shipping 11.0.22. Uh, any questions on that one? Thanks, Damien, yes. for... Go ahead, Damien. Yes, uh, we need to add to the changelog for that image that we are now providing a G-linked uh, GDK because that is, that is a major change. We didn't have time to work on that part, but before uh, the image on Windows were just providing the GDK as it. Now oh. the GDK and Windows follow the same process as on Linux. It's passed through the Gilink tool. It's specialized and cleaned up from a lot of symbols and things. So it's specialized. And now we ship that GDK tuned version. The reason why I'm mentioning that is because uh, Erwin and I decided to not do everything at the same time for the agents. So the controller always have a different life cycle, of course. Mm -hmm. But in any case, uh, now it's shipped. So better to add it just to be sure for Windows user, for Windows container user, if you use the new controller image from today's weekly, then you might expect a bit of changes on GDK. So anyone knowing users or seeing everything, something going weirdly, don't hesitate. The reason is because we don't test it. And so in order to test it, we will need to spin up an agent and a controller and see the behavior uh, for serializing classes or install plugins that would use, let's say, specific modules in the GVM, just to be sure we don't have regression. But I don't believe we have such regression case for the Docker image, so better to write it down. Should yeah. be okay, but yeah. We've, I mean, we've been delivering J-Link based images on the Linux side for a very long time. So so I'm I'm not terribly concerned by that, but I think it's good that we update the change log. I'll take that. I've got the action item to update the change log. Very good. Yeah, better to write it. Uh, I've, mm -hmm. I agree. I, I, I've never been uh, someone trustworthy on hey, Java is portable. Uh, I've considered it a lie. So that's why when it mattered about changing the operating system and its primitives, mm, better advertising, better safe than sorry. But okay. that's a good change. So I believe the image will be reduced, so better. Right. It, it certainly should. It, on the on the Linux side, we, we save, what, 50 or 100 megabytes of the container image. So, so we, very good for Windows. Thanks. Anything else on the container image updates for the controller? Okay, next one is container image updates for the Jenkins agents. And there we've got one or more pull requests that are pending, but they haven't yet completed all the all of the steps that the controller does. The controller images have 
two very nice shell scripts that do a bunch of work. Do lots of work. And the lots of work is makes it a very clean. They simplify the integration and and operation, right? It's much easier with the controller. Uh, very nice and improvement. Thanks, Damien, for suggesting it to Bruno. I like his implementation very much. And by the way, given the direction it's taking, uh, we already merged the changes on controller side. I propose that we uh, proceed forward on the agent side, even if it's not exactly the same behavior. And then in the future, we will work on factorizing the scripts and the methods because it looks like Bruno and Hervé worked on different subsets. Uh, common ground is that both of them uh, will want to simplify the calls to detect the new GDK or download them. Uh, mm -hmm. The whole logic about, around, hey, I want that GDK version for that platform and that CPU. Uh, and then you have an URL where you download the proper uh, GitHub release binary installer. And Temurin um, provides an API. The API has the advantage of not having to recode every word version packages they provide, you know, such as, oh, let's add a fourth digit just because we need a not fix just for Windows or Mac OS, just for yeah. the GDK. Uh, however, their API is full of issues and edge cases. So we cannot have a generic way of requesting their API. Uh, I don't remember if it's Bruno or Hervé, but one of them already opened an issue on their repositories. And so that's why I believe, I don't remember which one is the one, but they try to use a bit differently. So we might need to factorize this across images in the future, but I propose that we say, hey, both are doing the work. Uh, our goal is to switch the base image we use for running the shielding steps on the multi-stage Docker files. So let's proceed and then let's merge later. That's my proposal and I will want to have your advice uh, to see how can we uh, move forward because then as a maintainer, I will continue work with Hervé uh, to approve, validate and eventually ship uh, his changes on the agent images. But I want the platform SIG attendees to validate or invalidate that proposal. Yeah, for me, that, that works great. I think the I like how it works in the controller side where it's using a shell script uh, that had the downside that it didn't. There is a second implementation of it inside the Windows side because Windows doesn't execute shell scripts. And so there is certainly some opportunity to improve still. Yep. Great. Anything else, Damien? Okay, next. That's okay. okay, next topic then was Docker Hub sending HTTP 429 errors. And Damien, maybe you want to give a summary of that one. Yes. So during the past months, we had failure when deploying and only during deployment of the images, whether agent controllers. Um, these errors are a rate limit. But in that case, it's not the Docker Hub functional rate limit. It's their abu anti-abuse system. Because when we were building images, we were building so much platforms. And since the requests are pull and push and manifest requests, the fact that we were building a lot of platform in parallel on the same private subnets, that was, we were picking at 2,000, uh, 2,200 uh, requests per minute which triggered the anti-abuse system because all, those, all of these requests were coming from a single IP. That was due to an infrastructure change we had a few months ago. We applied, uh, after discussing with Docker, they agreed on let's spread our outbound request across multiple IPs first so we can uh, avoid passing the threshold of their anti-abuse system. So we are now using only on trusted CI, the private controller and private agent that we use for delivering official images, we are, we use three IPs instead of one, and that work. So now the next step to have a sustainable relationship with Docker, since they are a huge sponsor for us, we started the work on removing the Eclipse Temurine base images and instead downloading uh, uh, the installer from binary 
because that avoids downloading all the layers for each, each image for each CPU. Because we have Linux and Windows, we have different Linuxes, different Windows operating system. And for each one, we download a different Eclipse temporary image, not mentioning the uh, Intel, IRM, S390X, pre-PC uh, vari variations. So that's a lot of layers. We expect by that base image change to be able to decrease of 33% uh, the amount of layer we download, which will be a sustainable way of rebuilding the images and avoiding this problem in the future, because that will avoid, even if we spread free free IP, the 2000 requests still go to the Docker Hub. So if we can decrease it to 100, 500 or even less, that will help Docker to be sustainable. And of course, I've told them that since they provide us so many good tools that are so efficient, it's so easy to add a new Linux or a new CPU version for the images. Now they have to handle it on their own because that moved their developer tools experience to create some strain on their registry teams. So maybe an internal discussion they should have. But thanks to them, thanks for them uh, for the sponsor they provide us. Thank you. So we that work to re to replace the Temerin base image with the Eclipse installer still needs to happen on the agents, but agent builds are not as frequent right now as as controller builds. Controller builds every week plus all the LTSs. Good. That's Thanks. the idea. All right. Anything else, Damien? That you, Damien, that you want to share on Docker Hub? Nope. On the infrastructure side, we consider the issue solved due to the IP spread. And given we have started the sustainable work on, and let's say, sparked the, that work, we consider that issue closed on the infrastructure side. And now we are happily handing it over to the SIG platform here, given that uh, two of the infrastructure team members are also maintainers of the images. So the work won't stop here, of course. Great. Thank you very much. Kevin, you want to take the next one, Docker-based quick start tutorials? Uh, sure. So um, Bruno, uh, Bruno has been working on incorporating Docker Compose into the tutorials in the documentation. Uh, so we've got multi-branch pipeline. We've got the node. We've got the Python, um, all the base tutorials really covered. Um, there was an issue where Docker Compose was updated recently to 2.4.27. Uh, it was causing some issues where the Docker Compose commands weren't working. Uh, so Bruno figured out what was the issue, submitted some pull requests to fix the issue. Uh, and the instructions changed to uh, go from Docker Compose up to Docker Compose, uh, I want to say it's like profile Maven up. So it changed the instructions just a little bit. Um, but it changed it so that it now works uh, as it's intended to. Um, so uh, let's see here. Um, I think, it, yeah, the Docker Compose profile Maven up. Uh, so before it was just Docker Compose uh, Maven up D. And so the profile now is the, was the fix for the issue that uh, was part of the update. Um, and yeah, it was, yeah, Bruno took care of everything in the meantime, really uh, quick and easy. Uh, everything was done in the background. So thankfully that was taken care of and uh, everything's working again. So yeah, thanks to Bruno for all that work. Great. All right. We still need to improve the Jenkins install instructions, but Bruno's continuing that and he'll, he'll look at it when he gets back from vacation. So the Jenkins install instructions are still using the old technique where they say things like, run this terrible, awful stack of commands to get yourself a working controller. And Docker Compose up is a lot easier. Great, thanks. Any questions from others on the quick start tutorials? Okay, so the next work in progress on the container images. As far as I can tell, the controller is, is done for the get everything up to date. Our focus is now on the, the agents. That's both Docker agent and Docker SSH agent, where we've got draft pull requests, and we've got one pull request that's not in draft that's moving us towards getting off of the Temerin containers and onto Temerin binaries. Questions or concerns on the work in progress? 
Okay, great. Last topic is to, to say no progress since our last meeting on the 2 plus 2 plus 2 Java support plan. However, be reminded that Spring has announced end of life for Spring Security 5.8.x and Spring Security 5.8.x um, is part of Jenkins. So we will eventually be switching to Spring 6, Spring Security 6. And that will require that we we require Java 17 as a minimum version. That will re require that we switch to Spring Spring Framework 6, that we switch to Jetty 12. There are all sorts of changes that we switch to Jakarta EE 9 instead of J Jakarta EE 8. So all of the javax.servlet imports will now become jakarta.servlet. It's a big change. It's coming probably in the next six to nine, maybe 12 months. Any questions on those? All right. Any other topics we need to discuss today? Great. Then let's call it done. Recording will be available in 24 to 48 hours. <laughs>